Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the courtyard of the Pentagon where we're covering DOD Lab Day, an exposition of technologies from each of the military services, including the Defense Department. And we have with us an Army experimental test pilot, Major Joe Miner, uh, who is uh, flew Apaches, flew Blackhawks, and is also with the degraded uh, visual environment, uh, a challenge for every helicopter pilot that's going into a landing zone. Sir, tell us a little bit about how important this capability, how important this program is to the Army. Well, uh, thank you for the good introduction here. DVE uh, is something that every aviator is familiar with, having operated in Iraq and Afghanistan over the past 15 years. Uh, it's the cause of so many accidents and so many loss of lives, but just as importantly, it's lost capability. So there's been many missions that have been canceled because of Army Aviation's inability to fly in all weather conditions. And the DVE mitigation program aims to not only improve the safety and save those lives and not lose those aircraft, but also to add capability to the ground commander so that Army Aviation can support the ground forces in all weather conditions. And what are some of the ways that you guys are, are doing that? There have been a whole bunch of technologies talked about over time. What are some of the technologies you think are most promising to solve this problem? So we look at the problem as a three-piece problem with three solutions. And the, the three pieces are flight control improvements, queuing improvements and symbology sets, and then sensors. So a combination of those three pieces working together uh, in some optimum way will really be the, the optimal solution set to get us uh, into the future. A uh, challenge that's been going on for some time, how long before there are fielded solutions out there so the warfighter is benefiting from them? Somebody who maybe doesn't have the skills of an experimental test pilot is just, even as extraordinary as Army helicopter pilots are, you know, be able to handle it no matter the skill set of the pilot. Well, I think when I talk through those three areas, it's not like we're trying to build in this program one single system. We're trying to build a body of knowledge in science and technology and then spin that off into programs of record. So a great example of a place that we've already fielded and seen great capability increase is the flight control improvements in the CH-47F uh, that's been fielded now on the battlefield for about 10 years. And that's had great capability in the degraded visual environments. Uh, we've also seen advanced symbology sets in other aircraft that have moved in, and we're moving forward towards a sensor set uh, in the fleet. But as things become ready for fielding and ready to help the warfighter, we try to work with the programs of record to get those things integrated as quickly as possible to save lives as soon as possible. When you talk about flight controls, there are things that folks understand with sensors, be able to sense the ground, sense where your rotors are. Uh, there's a sense that you have an understanding of. Uh, but talk to us about how flight controls play into this. How do you take uh, a flight performance in a flight envelope of Chinook, which is a known commodity dating back to the early 1960s, but is, through a flight for, from a flight control standpoint, helping you mitigate that problem? Now, that's a great question, and that's one of the things that we spend a lot of time trying to, to do is to educate people on the different ways that those systems can help. Uh, like you said, sensors are very self-explanatory, queuing is pretty self-explanatory. But with flight control, it allows it to fly the vehicle easier and to focus more energy on other things. So I would take it as the difference between flying a legacy helicopter might be a unicycle and a more advanced helicopter may be a bicycle. Eventually we'd like to get to the point where it's more like riding a tricycle. Easy for everyone to do even if you can't see where you're going. So then the bumper sticker is that the Foxtrot is more like a bicycle than a unicycle. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe more like a, a, a two-wheeled bicycle or a bus, two-wheeled school bus perhaps. <laughs> two-wheeled school bus. I want to, maybe, maybe Jay Leno has one of those. Sir, thanks very much. Best of luck on the program. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.